To make good decisions about your student loan portfolio, there are three things that you need to know. One, the names of the loans you have borrowed. Two, the name and contact information for the servicers of these loans. And three, when the first payments are due. To begin, you first need to start by determining what loans you have borrowed and who the servicer is for those loans. The servicer is your point of contact for anything regarding the repayment of the loans. This includes changing your address, sending your payments, or requesting to postpone payments. It's possible that you will have multiple servicers to manage during repayment. A list of all of your federal loans and the correlating servicer is recorded in your account with NSLDS, the National Student Loan Data Service. To log in, you will use the same information you used each year to complete your FAFSA form. If you don't remember your PIN, you can get it by visiting pin.ed.gov. Now in recent years, many loans were sold by their original lender. If this happened to your loans, you would have received a letter notifying you of the change. If you no longer have the information that was sent about your new servicer, or the servicer listed in NSLDS is inaccurate, you can seek assistance from the Federal Student Aid Information Center at 1-800-4-FED-AID or email fsa.customer.support at ed.gov. For information on non-federal education loans, including loans from your school, referred to as institutional loans, or loans borrowed from a private lender, you will need to contact your medical school's financial aid office or access your credit report at annualcreditreport.com. A free credit report from each credit bureau is available once a year. But remember, not all lenders report to every credit bureau, so it's important to check all three reports at least once to be sure you have found all of your outstanding debt. Now after your entire debt portfolio has been identified and you know who is servicing each loan, the next step is to determine when the first payments are due. Most federal loans will have at least a six-month grace period after graduation. However, in three specific cases, some loans may not have a grace period. These include consolidation loans, PLUS loans dispersed prior to July 1, 2008, and if you took longer than six months to transition from undergraduate program to medical school or if you took a leave of absence during medical school that was longer than six months, then you have already used your grace period on the loans you had at that moment and will go into repayment immediately. At any time, if you realize the loan payment is unmanageable, contact the servicer of the loan. The servicer is there to help you manage your loan debt and they can best explain your repayment and postponement options. Now, as a borrower of federal student loans, there are a number of deferment and forbearance types available. But as a medical resident, there is also a definite postponement option called a mandatory medical residency forbearance. This option results in postponing payments in annual increments, at the end of which another increment can be requested. If requested repeatedly, this option, mandatory medical residency forbearance, can be used to postpone required payments throughout residency. Keep in mind that though payments are not required, the accrual of interest is occurring so voluntary payments of some or all of the interest is allowed and encouraged. Use these tips and know that managing your loans wisely is the way to a healthy financial future. For more information on managing your student loans, check out the videos and fact sheets on the AAMC website.